Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we gather for worship, uh, we greet those around us with the peace of the Lord. Sinful condition. 
Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take out the insert from your bulletin for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. We read together the words of the intro. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father. Isaiah chapter 50. 
these words of Isaiah are really the words of Jesus speaking prophetically. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from James chapter 3. James warns against the power of the tongue used in evil ways. Encourages us to use our tongue to speak good. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness for we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers, these things ought not to be so. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your eyes for the Holy Gospels. We sing the Alleluia verse. Immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, 
were greatly amazed and ran up to Jesus and greeted him. <coughs> he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe. Help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the, young, the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything. <clears throat> prayer. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In response to our God and his word, we confess our faith, page 206, the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father,
grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text today from Mark chapter 9, the gospel reading, and our sermon theme, I believe, help my unbelief. That's a paradox. Two contradictory things, and yet they're true. It's a contradiction. I believe, says the man, help my unbelief. How can that be? How can both be true? It's both scripture, I believe, and yet help my unbelief. It seems like a contradiction. But in reality, as we look at our text, we will see that we too often think the very same way. We look at our text this morning in two parts. The first part, demons and unbelief. And secondly, the words, I can. We start with demons and unbelief. That's where our text starts. Jesus has just been up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter and James and John. It's been a glorious thing. And yet the other nine disciples are down below. And this man has brought his demon-possessed son for healing. The disciples were probably pretty confident, we're not told, but Jesus had already sent them out on a journey, two by two. And they came back from the villages they had visited that time, and they remarked to Jesus, even the unclean spirits obeyed us. They were amazed. They could heal. They could speak the word of God, but they were most amazed at all that even the demons obeyed them. And so, Here's a demon-possessed child. How hard can it be? Time and again, they tell that spirit to leave. But he refuses. And pretty soon, there's a huge crowd. The townspeople, curious. The scribes, asking questions. What's wrong? You shouldn't be doing this. The disciples huddling, conferring, trying to figure out what they're doing wrong, how they could help. And into this great crowd, here comes Jesus. With Peter and James and John, and everybody comes running up to Jesus. Help us sort this out. Fix this. They told them what's going on. The man brought his son, my poor son. For years, he's been afflicted. He's mute, he can't talk. The demon gives him seizures, throws him down, rolls him around, grinds his teeth, makes him rigid. Your disciples can't help. What about you? Imagine how it had been for those parents. For years since childhood. Sometimes a very normal son. And then, all of a sudden, everything would change. The demon would attack. Maybe throw the boy into fire or into water. They'd have to quickly rescue him, never knowing when he would turn, when he would change. Their poor son who couldn't control this greater power within him. Life had been hard and difficult. These parents, I'm sure, had brought their child to all the doctors, all the healers, every holy person, tried everything. Nothing had helped, nothing had worked. But they wouldn't give up. They hear of this Jesus who is doing miracles. And this father brings his son 
to Jesus. We too live in a world that is filled with demons. <coughs> demons are simply fallen angels, as you know, created by God, holy, who rejected God, followed Satan. These demons cast out of heaven and like Satan, angry, furious, not able to do anything to God to hurt him because they are his creatures. They have no power, no authority compared to God. And so they seek to hurt those whom God loves. They seek to wreak havoc on his creation. And at times they do a pretty good job. Demons have adopted subtler tactics in our day, not often possessing a person like they did this young boy. Probably because it'd be counterproductive. If we realized the reality of demons and their power, it would cause us to flee to Jesus. And so demons work in other ways, but their goal is the same. Their goal is unbelief. The father says, I believe, but I don't. I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, and yet I know my life is filled with sin. That father says, I know I don't believe and live as I ought. I keep messing up. I'm not the father or husband I should be. I'm not the man of God that I should be. Help my unbelief. Why don't I do what I want? I pray my sin, my failures will not stop my son from being healed. And we can relate to that father. We believe, we know it. In the waters of baptism, we were given the gift of faith. And yet sometimes it's pretty hard for anyone to know or see that because we live lives that are contrary to the faith that is in us. We listen to the voice of the demons. We follow their temptations. We sin, we mess up, we do the things we do not want. We too can cry with this father, I believe, but help my unbelief, help my life of sin, help my challenges, my frustrations. The father says, if you can do anything, Jesus, have compassion on us and help us. If you can do anything. And that brings us to the second part of our text and message this morning. If you can, Jesus says, I can. If you can, Jesus says, what kind of words are those? Do you not know who I am? I have all power in heaven and on earth. There is nothing I cannot do. Jesus' power is unlimited, unquestionable. If you can. It's like somebody coming up to Albert Einstein and saying, can you add two plus two? If you can, of course he can. It's an easy, simple thing. What might be confusing or impossible for a little child learning math, not for one who knows it. Power over creation, power over demons. It's a certain thing with Jesus. He is Lord, Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, Lord of all things. 
All things are possible for the one who believes. All things are possible. I believe. Help my unbelief. The Father believes because he's been given the gift of faith. We believe because we too have been given that gift of faith. And though Satan would come and try to make us doubt our faith, the reality is that faith is not something that we have created, but that God has given. And when God gives us faith, it is enough. It is there. It is strong. It is saving faith. This faith that Jesus places in our hearts. Jesus commands that unclean spirit to come out. And he does. But not before throwing the boy to the ground in a, in a fit of anger. Making him like a corpse. The people thought he was dead. But Jesus takes him by the hand, lifts him up. He stands. He arose. He's alive. He's healed. These parents have their son back. Alive, healthy, cured. Amazing. <clears throat> We're not told what happens after that. I'm sure the commotion continued. The amazement of the crowd. But Jesus and his disciples, they slip into a house. And the disciples say, Why, Jesus? Why couldn't we cast it out? Jesus says, this kind can only be driven out by prayer. Seems a little bit like a paradox, too, but, but perhaps it is this, that, that the disciples were trying to cast out that demon with their own authority as a follower of Christ, saying, leave. And the demon would not listen to them because they were human. Perhaps the disciples did not pray, prayed to the Father, just spoke on their own. But with the power of God, the demon flees. And that same power is ours as well. When we go against the evil one, he will win us against him. But when we stand with Jesus, Satan must flee and all of his demons. I can, says Jesus. All things are possible. I believe. Help my unbelief. And Jesus does. He comes to us in our struggles, in our crises of faith. He comes to be with us. He comes to give us power. He comes to reassure us. He comes to strengthen our faith. He comes because he is Lord and God, Savior, the one who died on the cross, the one who takes away our sins, the one who has conquered Satan and all of his evil allies. Yes, I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, my God, my helper my Savior. And that, my friends, is the way that it is this 17th Sunday after Pentecost in the year of our Lord, 2018. In Jesus' name, amen. We rise for prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, for his miracles, for his power, for his easy victory over this demon and this boy, and for his power and victories in our lives. We thank you that faith is not our creation but as your gift given to us in the waters of baptism, nourished through your supper and through your word. 
be with us in times of doubt and challenge. Give us your love, your peace. Provide for us, take care of us. Defeat the evil one in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for those in the Carolinas and all of those impacted by the storm. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would lessen the storm, that you would reduce the rain, that you would minimize the flood, that you would be with those who are in need of rescue and provide that rescue, that you would be with the rescuers and keep them safe and enable them to accomplish their task. We pray, O oh Lord, for those families who mourn the loss of loved ones, that you would comfort them. We pray, Lord, for those in the Carolinas and those around the world impacted by storms and danger. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of life. We pray for your blessing on Chris as she celebrates 87 years of life. And for all who celebrate special days, dear Lord, give them your blessing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those who are ill or hospitalized who suffer in any way. We thank you, Lord, for the healings that, that you have given and, and pray that they would continue. Oh, Lord, we commend to your care, Harry. Roger, Linda, Jerry, Donna, Tammy, Geneva, Mike, Betty, Jerry, Bob, Corey, Lori, Colleen, Shar, Bonnie, Donna, Lauren, Gray, Evelyn, Mary, Bonnie, Jackie, and all in any need. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We bring now our offerings to the Lord. Uh, this is the, the weekend of the quarter when we're gathering also a special needs offering. There's envelopes in your pew. You can use them today or any Sunday to help those in need. Please also fill out the friendship register in the red folder.
the service of the sacrament, page 208. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all of creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us. When you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying,
Welcome to the table of the Lord. soul until life everlasting. Go now in the peace of the Lord. Amen. table of the Lord.
body and soul until life everlasting. Go now in the peace and the joy of Jesus. Amen. strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Go now in the peace of the joy of Jesus.
and strengthen and preserve you in body and soul until life everlasting. Go now in the peace and the joy of Jesus. Amen. Please rise for the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.
warm welcome to those who are guests today. Good to have you here. We pray God's blessing to find you this coming week. Everyone's invited downstairs for coffee. Uh, following that for a Sunday school and Bible class. Sunday school will start up here. Uh, Bible class in the fellowship hall. If you haven't registered for uh, Sunday school, there are sheets in the narthex. Uh, we appreciate uh, you doing that. This afternoon, um, ACT youth, uh, 9th through 12th grade, and parents meeting at 4 o'clock. Uh, you can be here for that. Um, two weeks from today is our block party, and worship that day, September 30th, will be at 10 o'clock instead of 9 o'clock. So make a note of that. But also for the block party, um, think perhaps of who you might invite to come and worship with you that day. Um, it's a, a great day. We have worship at 10, a free meal following that, and then music and games uh, for all ages as well. And then finally, uh, in October, we're going to be starting a, a daily Bible reading program called Bring It Home, a Bible story for each day of the week. And by the elevator, there's two different Bible story books. Uh, sign up for one of those, and uh, they should be here next week uh, to pass out, and that starts then in October. Pray the Lord be with each of you. Keep you in his care this coming week.